right, man. I quite like it indeed. So how you doing guys? So down at the allotment we've got a little rat problem. We've had a rat running around for a while. It's it's to be expected, I mean especially during coronavirus, there's less people actually working their allotments, there's a lot of crops left in the ground, there's a lot less people to scare away the rats, to lay traps, there's people putting down poison traps all over the place, but they're still getting about, yeah, so there's been a couple of chicken killings by the rats at the rat's hands, or the claws, or whatever it is they used to kill them. But the rats are getting a problem, so I decided that I'm not into the whole snap traps and buying it and you know what's the best way that I can get rid of them, so I found the bucket rat trap. And essentially you get a plastic bucket, you cut the you could you cut a, a funnel going into it, you secure it down, you put some peanut butter in there, the rats climb in, the rats can't get out. Now I like the idea, but I only go to the allotment every couple of days, so a rat would have plenty of time to chew its way out of a plastic bucket if it got stuck in a plastic bucket. But I've got a gas bottle. So I thought if I mark it up and cut the top off a gas bottle, flip it over, weld it back in place, or put a hinge or a catch or some sort of way to keep that lid down, yeah, cut myself an opening in the top, put a little bit of pipe on it, you know, get rid of this, put a little bit of pipe on it, smear the outside of the pipe with some peanut butter, the rats will smell it and the rats will go in and they'll be stuck in there and plus because it's on the outside of this bit the rats won't be able to reach it to eat the peanut butter so it'll still be baited to catch even more rats. The question remains of how I will then dispose of the rats once they're stuck in the gas bottle, I don't know but I'll be able to get rid of the rats somehow, I'll figure that out when I cross the bridge, it might not even work, but I plan it, I plan it to work, I, I will will it into working, yeah, so I've got the gas bottle, I'm going to chop the top off, flip it over, get rid of this bit, put a bit of pipe, I don't have a bit of pipe, so I'll be making a bit of pipe like I did for the gas bottle wood burning stove project that I worked on recently. So I'll be making a little bit of pipe, getting that welded on, and hopefully being able to get rid of the rats. I mean, if it works brilliantly, I might just keep on baited in my back garden. A little rain cover over it, if there is a rat knocking about the place, get rid of it. You know, there's train tracks next to where it, well, there used to be train tracks. There's a bit of wasteland not far from where I live. There's wasteland over the back, there's wasteland over there, there's wasteland all the way around us. Get rid of them, yeah? If a rat passes by and I catch it and get rid of it, it's someone's house that isn't going to get infested by a rat. So, I'm making one for the allotment, as I say, it works out, I'll make more. So I've got myself a little line marked, I don't know if you can see it, it's right here. And that's how high I want the, uh, the cut to be. Yeah, so instead of messing around and fussing about, I'm just going to mark it off on my trusty bit of uh, stainless or steel, whatever it is. I'm just going to bring it round. Marking it off at the same height, which will then allow me to make a nice smooth cut. Oh, so it, it, it is possible to rat proof your duck enclosures and your chicken enclosures. Uh, there's a ways to, to protect the crops, you know, a lot of people, apparently rats don't like onions too much of the onions around all the beds, and it dissuades the rats from going into the beds to find what's planted in the middle. But honestly then, what am I going to do with all them onions? So just doing this, just get rid of it. I mean, we've got to stay on top of the problem, you know. Apparently New York's got 10 rats to every person. I think we've probably got about a rat to every every ten people on the allotments, you know, there is a, a little bit of a problem, there was a fire, uh, I can't think when the fire was, a year, two years, maybe three years ago, um, this fire, you know, was, was caused by dodgy equipment apparently, nobody thinks it was arson, I mean there's some conspiracy crazies that think it was arson and the council done it to hike up the rent prices which didn't actually get hiked up and there's all sorts of things flying about, uh, but in reality, that was the fire, however it started, and in this fire about 200 pigeons died. So the committee, who work on behalf of the council in all of their infinite wisdom, decided to just bulldoze what had been burnt in the fire and dumped it into the car park, filled with all of these dead pigeons and chickens and ducks and all the different things that had died in the fire. 
at which point the rats moved in. Yeah, so I had this huge heap, you know, I'm six foot four and it's taller than me. Um, sorry, I'm six foot two. I measured myself. I don't know if I've shrunk or if I just guessed that I was six four years ago. If I'm six foot two, the heap's taller than me. It's huge, yeah? And the rats moved in because there was plenty of food in it and they never really seemed to move out. So there's like traps around it and there's poison sprinkled on it all the time. All this stuff to try and dissuade the rats from still living there, but they still live there. And it's maybe six gardens away from my allotment. You know, my little post-apocalyptic farm. So, you know, I get a little bit of traffic from the rat population of the allotments. Uh, and I'm not too keen about it, you know, because me duck enclosure is foxproof, but it ain't rat proof. Yeah, I've got some uh, metal fencing where the gap's about three inch squares, and a rat's just going to walk through that. The foxes can't get through, but the rats can. So I put all my feed out for my ducks, and the rats probably eat a tenth of it. I have no idea how much they eat, but they eat some of it. So I'd, you know, I could feed me ducks for less if I got rid of the rat problem. So if I get rid of the ones that come to my allotment, I'll save myself some quid. I'll save myself some money. And obviously I'm making this myself, so it's not costing us anything other than a little bit of time. But we're in lockdown, and I'm still not back at work. You know, so let's fix it. Use your skills and fix your problems. Now, in terms of people with an actual shop, there's better ways to do this, you know. I mean, if you've got a big bandsaw that'll cut this distance, use that. Happy days. Just get a level clamp it in. Whoop, straight through. Yeah, you could sit there with a hacksaw for about eight hours. Cut through it. I mean, you hacksaw, big, strong, blue. As long as you can get the, the action going, you'd get through it in no whatever time, you know. Me, <coughs> angle grinder. Yeah, so I've got it sat on the bench. What you don't want to do with the gas bottle is just leave it hanging. Yeah, you need some anti-rollers. And these aren't anything fancy, literally anything will do. You could use stones that you pick up out the garden. You could put a little mound of soil. You could use absolutely anything. I've got a bit that I cut off an axe. That's on that side. I've got a little bit of square tube. I believe it was off what I've made the shed out of. I've got that on this side. And literally, it just stops it rolling off your bench. Yeah. Gas bottle's not going anywhere at this point. It's not explosive. There's no gas left in it. There's no whatever left in it. But if it falls off and breaks me too, it's my fault. Yeah. If it falls off and knocks me camera, it's my fault. Let's not do it. Yeah. It's a little bit of safety. You know, I'm going to be grinding, so I've got my safety glasses. I've got my uh, my gloves to keep my hands safe. I've got my apron to keep me safe. I've even got myself a nice hoodie on so that the sparks don't catch on my arms. Because honestly, I can't tell you the amount of times I've had burns here from sparks coming back. I've had burns up here from welding a bit too close. Just put yourself some layers on. Just a little bit of layers. A little layer up a bit, you'll be good. Don't worry about the heat, yeah? I'd rather be hot than hit, than burned. Good, good thinking.
It's been a random steal to the rescue, so I've had this line about the garden for a couple of years. No idea where it came from anymore. I think I got it off my mate. This is going to save us making me a bit of pipe, which makes my life easier, which I'm a big fan of. So I'm going to chop this in half. This top section's quite nice. The bottom section's all chewed up with what I'm assuming was a plasma cutter. So kudos to him for having fun with one of those. Um, chop this in half. And when I get this chopped off and get me a little hole cut, I'll weld this to it. Yeah, just half of it, just that little lip. Uh, if I put this on, the rats would be able to climb up to that, that size and possibly climb up it. So I don't want that, so this is happening. So I'll get this chopped in half and everything's ready to move on. So plans change. Originally I was going to be using the top off the same gutter spot that I'll be using the body from. But honestly, this bit's just a bit of a nightmare. Yeah, cutting through it's going to be a nightmare. Getting through it's going to be a nightmare. Working it's going to be a nightmare. So I'm going it away. Yeah, one day I might have a use for it. For now though, I've got this one. Yeah, it in comparison it's tiny in comparison it's a lot less work yeah so all i'm going to do is cut around here get it all flushed off nicely cut this handle off get me hole made weld this on and i'll be very close to done because with the weight of this and this one it's so much easier of a job because this one just sits in nicely yeah once i add the weight of me knuckle yeah that weighs quite a bit so if it weighs quite a bit and I have trouble lifting it, where well, I don't have trouble lifting it, but I feel it, I feel the lift. Rats aren't going to be able to push that off, so I'm quite happy, you know, I'll get rid of the rat down at the allotment, maybe everyone will like us a little bit more, you know, because at the moment I'm just the guy with all the ducks that fly around in the storms, inside their enclosure, but you know, that, that's what I'm known for. This way I'll be the guy that gets rid of the rats and that's a much better way to be known. So the fact I'm going to be welding a square tube to it offers me a very, very rare chance, yeah? Very rare opportunity. That's the word, opportunity. And it basically means I can just cut four straight lines to weld this off. Usually with a circle, you've got to cut, you've got to cut, you've got to cut, you've got to peel stuff back, you've got to cut it more, you've got to get a grinding wheel in there, you've got to smooth it all out. It's a nightmare, you end up with a rounded file and do filing it by hand and all that sort of malarkey yeah but i'm welding a square tube on it works. i can just cut four straight lines and happy days bob's your uncle it's gonna be great so basically i get this welded on all i've got to do is meeting this uh this rim up you know get the flappy wheel on meeting that up and we're basically done once this is welded on so i'm going to get those cut get that ground get the welder out the shed i'll get this bit welded on and everything's good. All I'll have to do is grab my peanut butter out of the cupboard, take this down to the allotment, load it up and just wait for the rats. Just wait till I hear that skittering when I go down there and feel that there's a rat inside my trap. Then sit there for quite a long time and figure out how I'm going to get rid of the rat that's in my trap. But that's a problem for another day. Problem for another day. So I gave a few taps with the hammer on the floor over there, so I didn't bother filming it, but I basically put one hit onto each side just to bring it flat, so that I'll be able to get a better weld welding this on. Yeah, that's already so much better. Beautiful. Yeah? Let's get welded.
they were hard. Nothing we slam me about this product whatsoever. So I just put some nice, uh, nice straight seam welds onto it. Yeah. So I'll get that broken back. Hopefully I haven't burnt through anywhere. Hopefully I haven't missed any spots. If I have, I'll just touch them up, and this will be ready to go. So as you can see. So this sits on the top like this, the rats come in, they smell the peanut butter which will be laced all the way around here. Yeah, they go through the hole to try and get it and they find themselves in my gas bottle and that's stuff. Yeah, hopefully they won't be able to jump high enough to get out, if they can, I'll just heighten the gas bottle, I'll just make it tall, I'm a tall, I don't care if I'm but one six foot tall. Yeah, with a ramp going up to it to try and catch them, yeah. This is the plan, this is how I'm going to get rid of them. So there we have it, everything's finished, yeah. So I've got the main body of my truck done, which was literally consisted of cutting the top off the gas bottle. And there we have it, that's ready to go, yeah. So a normal rat shouldn't be able to jump as high as that, as so as, as what I'm thinking, yeah. Especially since it's got to jump through a special little hole that I've got cut there. Yeah, so this is going to go onto the allotment as is, yeah. I'm not going to put a catch or anything whatsoever, because that's quite heavy, yeah. I think my... Uh, my auntie's dog would struggle to move that, and that's a bit bigger than the rats that we've got. Yeah, so happy days. So this will be put in just as is. Yeah, I'm not even prettying up in here because everything down there is rusty. They used to rust. They don't have anything to fear from rust in their eyes, yeah? So I'll put that in, smear it all with their peanut butter, and hopefully catch myself some rats. I'm still worried about what I'll do with them once I've caught them. You know, uh, so for the suggestions that I've had from my friends has been put this in a fire which just sounds cruel um, pour something in that'll kill them which sounds a bit iffy or just once you've got them just put the poison in yeah once the poison's in the only thing they've got to eat is the poison and the poison will kill them which is what most people are doing now anyways yeah I have checked there's absolutely no way to release them anywhere in mainland UK because it's illegal because they're pests you can't introduce them to anywhere yeah, I guess I could bring them home, put them in a cage and keep them as a pet, but I've got absolutely no interest in keeping a, a wild rat as a pet. Yeah, I wouldn't want a tame rat. I wouldn't want to get one from a pet shop. It's not my thing. Yeah, no judgment of people that do, but not my thing. I'll Google to see if there's out I can deal with them. Yeah, but honestly, just once I get them, they're going to be killed in some which way, form, one, one way or another. Yeah, if you don't like that, I do apologise, but they're a menace. Yeah, they're killing chickens. They're killing people's pets. They're killing people's livestock. Yeah we got to go. Yeah, this is the best way that I've thought of. So this will be installed uh, tomorrow. Next couple of days, maybe tomorrow I'll be down there. I've been today. I might just take it down tomorrow and get it baited up. Uh, I might take a couple of slices of bread and have a peanut butter sorry, as I'm there, uh, as I'm working. Leave a little bit of peanut butter here, there and everywhere so they get used to it. They taste it, they go, I like this. And then they smell it in here, they climb in, boom, got them. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.